paganism, the definition of paganism is the, worship, the, the reverence of nature. In other words, nature worship. Nature worship. In other words, worship in nature. And that's what you're seeing happen now with the whole green movement. Boy. People are starting to go more towards worship in the earth than, than looking at the one who created the earth. In other words, we're getting to where, let's preserve this earth. Let's do what we can to go green. Everyone's going green. But they don't realize there's another agenda behind going green. Yeah. It's almost like a whole religion being birthed. It's Isn't a whole religion right? being birthed. Is, it, is this the New Age movement? This is the New Age movement. The New, okay. the new Age movement actually started in the Garden of Eden when Satan said to Eve, You should not surely die. As soon as you take of this fruit, you will be as gods. The whole point of the New Age is to become as God. What really concerned me is, uh, this is a political show too, that um, our you know, current president, during his inauguration speech, he uh, said, spoke of the New Age movement twice, or New Age, mm -hmm. it's time we go to a new age. Mm -hmm. And that really caught my attention because that isn't a, um, it goes totally opposite of the Bible. Right, right, like, like you're right. Saying. What do you, I think what has happened is we have a paradigm shift. They've been saying that we're shifting. In other words, we're shifting from the era of Christ, which is they call the Pisces, that we're, we're entering into an era of the Aquarius. In other words, we're entering into that era of Antichrist. In other words, where the, the whole kingdom of God is going to be... In other words, we're looking for... We're not looking for Jesus to return no more. We're looking for to create heaven on earth now. And there's a lot of dominion theology. Dominion means uh, we are going to create heaven on earth now. We're not waiting for Jesus to return. That's why we got to do everything to preserve the earth. That's why we got to get involved in politics. That's why we got to do this. We got to conquer. It's almost like a forceful thing. We're trying to conquer in the name of God, but it's not. It's not biblical, and it's not the correct way yeah. God wanted us intended it yeah. to be. As a matter of fact, if you study the Book of Revelation. It's this kind of um, pride mm -hmm. started in the Garden of Eden, like you said, that is actually going to, you know, in a sense, cause us global warming. Mm -hmm. You know, in a sense mm -hmm. that the whole world will be destroyed because of our sin. Right. You know, and, and, and no matter what we do, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse if we try to do it on our own and we don't repent. Right. When you were talking about how uh, paganism was related to the New Age, you can also take it to this point, too. Paganism is also worshiping yourself. In other words, the, the, the person that you worship the most is the person that you look in the mirror every day. Yeah. In other words, Satan doesn't have to get you involved in the occult or all these other practices. All he has to do is make you fall in love with yourself. Yeah. In other words, thinking that, oh, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you done crept over from pride and rebellion. Yeah. And that's what, let's say, Lucifer was kicked out of heaven because of that very purpose. And what do you think the, the observation of... The, the 60s and 70s where, you know, the woman's movement, it wasn't cool to stay home anymore and, mm -hmm. and, and make your kids feel like you actually love them. Mm -hmm. It was more cool to, let's say, love your job a little more. Right. And um, I see uh, kids now in their, you know, teens, 20s that are licking their wounds and when they look in the mirror they have to, it's almost a survival to love themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, people who are into this, this new age, you know, love yourself movement they almost are doing that for survival it's almost like uh, what you just said about we're actually in a trend right now we're actually going back to the old time when we we're back in the 60s there's a rebellion yeah. there's a hatred towards uh -huh. God uh -huh. they're actually the peace sign is just pretty much coming and going everywhere the so-called peace the so-called peace sign because it actually means the broken cross it's an upside down cross which means it's it's what they're trying to do is say this is what we uh, through peace and unity we have to break Christianity yeah. because Christianity is the fundamentalist view. It's the view that's been keeping everybody narrow-minded. You know, this is the only view that's keeping us from presenting our new order. Yeah. And I want to encourage everybody who has a little necklace of a broken down cross to look on the internet um, under peace symbols, under I think satanic symbols, Nero's cross is, is what they're Nero's called. Cross, right. And, uh, and uh, be careful what you wear and what you want to represent. Cause it's, it's not a good symbol, and it's real popular right now. Everyone's going after trends and fades and fads. You know, in other words, everyone, whatever's cool, whatever in. But the, I think the problem is that people don't do their due diligence in looking up things for themselves. 
they kind of just go along with the crowd. Yeah. Oh, this looks nice. I'll wear it. Yeah. Oh, this sounds good. Or this practice looks okay. You know, I think I'll, I'll get involved with it. But if you don't understand the beginnings, the origins, the roots, and where it came from, and even the people that are promoting it, you have to look at those things. Yeah, and you know, the, the, the church, again, um, you know, that the pastors typically, you know, they don't understand this stuff. And the, the sheep aren't being fed that. They, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're being fed, you know, the love of Christ, and that's real important. Right, really right. Important. But there's, there's more to this. And how does, how do pastors watching, or how do um, members of the church watching say, well, this is really important, you know, where do I start? I think where you need to start is begin doing their own, uh, what I could say, do their own studies. Mm -hmm. Begin to look at these things and just don't take them just for, as uh, a fade or a trend. Really look into the deep issues of it. In other words, just don't look at it as a, oh, okay, that's you. Uh, it's just an exercise. Really look to the backgrounds and find out why are the people from the East starting to merge with the West and what is the purpose of it. In other words, is it really benevolent or is it really evil? Uh, and also, another thing is for pastors that I think the problem is that they're afraid to get into those type of um, issues. issues or get into those type of books. I've had some ministers come and say, you know, why would you study that stuff? Because, you know, that has nothing to do with study with, with God. But says, but if you don't know the devices, if you don't know the ways of the enemy, how are you going to be able to tell somebody else? Because, for instance, the reason I do this is because my, I had, my father was a pastor, and his church was destroyed because of witches coming to our church and, and coming in with the Jezebel spirit and causing strife, division, slander, actually uh, planting uh, pouches of potions in our house, in our church, and my father didn't let him go because he was afraid to confront them. And another reason why he's got the big supporters of the ministry. Yeah, and the Jezebel spirit is and harsh. It's in um, very. Revelation. Mm -hmm. um, Revelation two twenty one. To, to the churches you tolerated the spirit. Mm -hmm. So it it seems way out there, but it's Jezebel the was a religion of paganism. In other words, she's the one that brought uh, bell worship. When she brought bell worship, it caused the children of Israel to turn from God and follow after idols. And that's what happened. We have a lot of people following after paganism in the church. It's not necessarily bowing down to a Buddha or bowing down to a Muhammad or these things. It could be just yoga. It could be contemplative prayer. It could be uh, uh, going and getting acupuncture, going and getting Reiki, all these things because the Eastern beliefs don't uh, line up with the Christian beliefs. They believe in another God. They believe in the force which everyone's saying, you know, it's popular, the force, let the force be with you. They understand that force represents the everything that's in the universe. Everything is God to them. Uh, like the Hindus, they worship 300 million gods. Mm -hmm. In other words, everything to them is a god. They worship just about anything. But they don't have that relationship with the one and true God. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, as we uh, water down the Bible, I see that we... Uh, in the United States, we water down the Constitution. Right. Do you have any comment on that? Yes, I do. Um, as we see, when you get away from the uh, origins, you get away from the roots of what this nation was built on, which is Christianity, we start doing away with uh, the things that have made America great. In other words, the Constitution. Uh, we start putting amendments. We start doing executive orders to uh, change the laws. When we change the laws, we go from a point of obeying to a point of rebellion and anarchy. And that's what I see happen in America. We're going, we're having an anarchy. Where it used to be where people stood up for their beliefs. Now we're just kind of just letting the atheists just kind of come in. We're kind of let everybody just kind of just push us out of the way and do their own thing. Yeah.